everybody. Welcome to episode number 131 of the Debt-Free Dad podcast. Today, we are going to be revealing the top three benefits of financial freedom, at least in our opinion. And crazy enough, none of them really have anything to do with money, stuff, interest rates, or even investing. You're going to find out what these top three benefits are on today's show. Stay tuned. Welcome to the Debt-Free Dad podcast where we're helping normal, everyday people learn how to save money and kick debt so they can live a happier and stress-free life. Now here's your host, Debt-Free Dad, Brad Nelson. Hey, 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 how is everyone doing today? You can find me on Facebook, TikTok, YouTube, and Instagram. Just search Brad Nelson, Debt-Free Dad. And uh, welcome to today's show. Remember to get all the resources, show notes, and links for today's show. Uh, head over to balancedcom forward slash 131. That's B-A-L-A-N-C-E-D-C-E-N-T-S.com uh, forward slash 131. So this past weekend, uh, we celebrated Independence Day. Actually, yesterday, if uh, we're going to be timely with this podcast episode, but Independence Day was just yesterday. And uh, Amber, Canada Day is, you said July 1st, right? Correct. Yes. Okay. So, do you guys do? So, are, is it typical same types of festivities as Fourth of July? You think? Uh, exactly the same. Fireworks. Yeah. yeah. Same mm-hmm. stuff. Isn't it interesting how our holidays kind of coordinate? I know. Isn't that crazy? It's very much the same. Although you guys have like a really early Thanksgiving, and it always catches me off guard. Like all of a sudden, it's like October first, and you guys are like Happy Thanksgiving. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's like mid October, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, it feels it feels early every time, and I'm like, wait a minute, it's only. And yours like, feels way too close to Christmas. I'm like, all that. There's so much going on. Yeah. At least we get a break. Yeah, that's interesting. That's interesting. So, anyways, being that we just celebrated the Independence Holiday, we celebrate uh, our country's freedom. Uh, you know, I always kind of question this. You know, when I was getting out of debt, one of the thoughts that I had uh, was. You know, I was driving around. We're seeing a lot of people celebrate. They're having their picnics. They're having their festivities. I love the 4th of July, by the way. I think it's awesome. Especially love the food and hanging out, uh, fireworks and all that stuff. And uh, it really kind of got me thinking as I started to change my financial mindset of this whole idea of, you know, are you you really, and we're talking finances here, uh, not all bunch of other stuff, but, uh, you know, are we really free when it comes to, say, like a term like financial freedom? You know, here we are, we're celebrating all of this freedom that we have. But when I was getting out of debt, my my mindset was finally changing. And I started to kind of look at stuff and money and debt and payments and even my job and how much time I spent there. I started looking at things just a lot, like a lot of differently. And I realized real quick that, man, when, when I was broke, I was like the furthest thing from free. Furthest thing. You know, I, I felt like I was trapped really by my own doing. And I was trapped uh, in my job. Not that I had a bad job. I had a great boss and great company that I worked for. There was really nothing wrong with the job. It was just, I don't feel I fit that job anymore. And I just felt trapped because, you know, here I am. I I got committed to the certain salary that I was making and the lifestyle that came with that salary. And I I say that thinking I was making all this money and (laughs) it wasn't really not even all that much money. But you still get accustomed to that salary and that lifestyle, right? And what ended up happening is that I would take that whole entire paycheck and I would wrap it up into a bunch of debt and payments and and literally trapping me to that particular salary. Like I didn't have any opportunity. Like for instance, if someone would have come to me and said, Brad, here, here's this really cool opportunity, really cool job for you. It's exactly what I wanted. It's everything that you want. It's everything that you need. You're going to feel fulfilled. But here's the deal, Brad. It's it's like 10 or $15,000 less than you're making right now. I would have had to say no. Because from a financial standpoint, I couldn't afford to take any sort of a pay cut to work at a job that was more fulfilling and and really satisfied all the needs and the goals that I wanted. Uh, So for me, like I felt really, really trapped. I also remember sitting up late at night. We had bought this brand new house back in uh, 2008 and it was double the mortgage payment of our first house. And I can remember sitting up at night having sleepless nights, worried about not only making that huge mortgage payment, but the two car payments that we had. We had, I remember when I found out that I was going to have a son, 
wasn't even born yet. I'm like worried. How are we going to afford like an eight or nine hundred hour daycare bill every single month now? Um, so like this whole, you know, this whole thing, you know, we talk about freedom, but when you think about your finances, most people, including myself at one time are anything but free. In fact, I think a lot of people are, are trapped. They're chained. Uh, they're stressed. Right. And I, I, I can't imagine most people would assign the word freedom to their financial life. Uh, I know I couldn't at one time. Oh, the feeling that I felt going to a job that I hated to pay the bills for silly choices that we made was awful. It was awful. I woke up. I felt sick every morning. I never wanted to go to my job. It was an awful feeling. And I did that for years. Oh, it's the worst. It's terrible. Isn't it? You remember Sunday, Sunday come. Oh yeah. <laughs> and like, you know, like, Oh man, it's like not that far away. <laughs> right now. Ryan, Ryan still works at a job and Ryan, you, you may, well, I know a lot of people might listen to this, so you may not be able to be honest, but do you get like the Sunday scaries going back to work? <laughs> no, I, I, I actually don't, but I think, I think, um, a big reason for that though is, is because getting out of debt, it allows you that freedom to not, to not be stuck in roles you hate, uh, because you have to pay the bills. Right. Um, if, And, you know, if you talk to a lot of people and kind of that worldly expectation is you get a job and you do the job well and you get promoted and you get promoted and you, you, and the the goal is to make more money. Right. Um, but when you don't have that pressure to make more money now, suddenly it's like, man, I mean, like a lot of people like get into leadership roles for the wrong reasons because it's for the money, but do you like leading people. Do you like the job part of that? Or what's your motivation for doing it? Is it because you're going to make more money? It's which is going to allow you to have a better lifestyle. And that, so for me, that's really where I'm at. I'm very happy in my abilities where I'm at and what I enjoy doing. Um, and I, I just don't feel that pressure. Um, and my, my son just graduated college and, and they had a few speakers at his ceremony and every one of them brought up the fact that the job they currently do is not the job they went to college for. And I think it's very, it was kind of good to hear that. And I think good for my son to hear that because it's, it's also that thing where you get a job, you make more money, you get 10 years experience, and now you're stuck because now you have 10 years experience, but you don't love what you're doing anymore and you want to go a different direction. But I have 10 years experience. And if I leave, I'm going to make less money. Well, once you take all the money things out of it, man. It's just, it's easy. I mean, you can really be like, yeah, I want to do that and start over and it's okay. And I, you know, it doesn't mean it's easy. It doesn't mean like everything's perfect, but it's much more possible. Yeah. But it's tricky. That's, it's a, it's a tricky line to walk because most people associate getting stuff as the result, right? It's the lifestyle that you get from the hard work, the salary, um, and, you know, you look at debt, you know, people look at debt as a tool. People look at his debt as just a way of life, but it's tricky because debt is the thing that's helping you get and finance the thing that you want. But at the same time, it's the thing that's ultimately in those 10 years that you just brought up, Ryan, over those 10 year period with those raise increases, those bonuses. And if you keep going further and further into debt to match the lifestyle that you're trying to make, all of a sudden, that same debt that is helping you get what you want is also the same debt that is now keeping you trapped and stuck in a position and a role that you don't want to be in. And I don't have the statistics right in front of me, but we've talked about them uh, back in 2020, the first season that we did this podcast. And we talked about how um, money plays a role in your finances. And it's staggering the statistics and the percentages of people who work in jobs that aren't really truly one engaged even with the job that they're working at anymore. You know, they just don't like it. But yet a lot of us are living paycheck to paycheck because we've got to earn that salary in order to pay all those bills that we've signed up uh, for over the years. Um, But the other thing too is, you know, we fall victim is that, you know, we, we like to buy all this stuff, but then how short lived is the enjoyment of those purchases actually like when you, when you buy that thing, how, how short lived is the excitement before you're on to the, to the next thing. Right. And, and that credit card balance, like I couldn't tell you what it was. I couldn't tell you what was all included in all of my credit card balance because it was already long gone out of my mind. I bought it. I was satisfied. Now I went on to something else. Yeah. So I was paying for these things that didn't even mean anything anymore. 
but it it's amazing how long you have to live with those decisions for. <laughs> yeah. Isn't it? Like it's, it's they make it so awful. easy. They make it so easy to go into debt. It's so easy to go it it is it is scary easy how how easy it is. But yet how long and how many years it takes to actually get out of debt. It is it is eye opening. It really really is. One other yeah, thing I, was, I go ahead, Ryan. I was just going to say, I mean, when you, just that short lived, you know, comment, I mean, I, I, for us, that's, that was, you know, us our getting out of debt journey. That's where it really hit home for us is like, we just learned that about ourselves is we were using debt to kind of cover up some of that feelings and all that. So we were a hundred percent like buy something, feel good. And it would last for a month or two or a day, depending on what we bought. Um, and you know, it, and still to this day, I mean, it's still, we, we wrestle with that, you know, cause you get that urge of, I, this is going to make me happy. If I have this, I'll be happy. I just sent you pictures. I got an inflatable hot tub, right? Yeah. <laughs> now we love it. We just got it. We didn't spend a ton of money on it. It's not very expensive. Um, but there's also that same feeling, you know, we, we kind of have been talking about buying a actual hot tub, but we're like, let's do this. It's pretty cheap. Let's see if we actually use it. We actually like it before we just go and spend a ton of money on a hot tub and then find out like, yeah, we don't really, we're not, we didn't use this as much as we thought we did. So, right. right. By the way, you gotta let me know how the hot tub goes. I've been, I've been looking at them for a couple of, well, well since they came out, it's been a couple of years now yeah. and uh, I've, I don't know anyone who owns one yet. So now I do. Yeah. So I'm excited. To, you're going to be the product tester for us. Yeah. <laughs> Let's know how that goes. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. But but it looks it looks awesome. But uh <laughs> but yeah, I totally get it. So let's kind of talk about these top three benefits though of financial freedom. So now that we talked about this whole idea of, you know, you're you're probably not feeling very free when it comes to your finances. Debt ultimately at the end of the day is the thing that's trapping you and keeping you from more freedom, financial freedom, less financial stress. So in our opinion, really when we talk about freedom being that we just celebrated Independence Day, the, the top three benefits, number one for me, uh, and you guys free to disagree or agree or add in some other ones, but time for me is probably one of the biggest ones. And I love this quote from Morgan Household from The Psychology of Money. He says, controlling your time is the highest dividend that money pays. And that is so true. I can remember when I was in my early 20s, even through my mid twenties, I had all these credit cards. I had two brand new cars. I had that first house and I was working two jobs, working 60, 70 hours a week. And here I am just trading that time for all of that, for, for that money, just to pay all those bills and have nothing left at the end of the day. And over the last nine years, as we reach financial freedom and debt freedom, I got to tell you, that's the number one benefit. You know, I just don't have that connection to stuff anymore. And and my filter for buying things, and especially when it comes to bigger ticket purchases, is, is really, is this going to steal my time away or is this going to give me more time? And that plays a big role in how we make purchases now because I want my time. Time is something that you never get back. And uh, for me, that has just been one of the biggest benefits. But another reason why time might be benefit to you is, heck, I mean, less financial stress. I mean, you think about how much people worry about their finances. Uh, I just read an article. I just mentioned this in a live meetup last week. Uh, it was an article about uh, people working in their jobs. Right now, uh, the average worker, and of course, we're doing this podcast episode at inflation is the highest it's been in about 40 years. But the average worker right now is is worrying about their finances while at work in a 40-hour work week for a little over 10 hours a week. That's 25% of their working hours that they are spending worrying and stressing about money and finance. So when you say, well, how do I get my time back, Brad? Well, think about what you could do with 10 or 11 more hours at work. Well, you could do a better job. You could do you know better performance. You could get yourself to a point where you get a... Uh, you know, a promotion and whatever it might be. You might find yourself another job, whatever, right? But it allows you the time to actually focus on getting better, improving, reaching other goals in your life because the rat race of living paycheck to paycheck finally comes to an end and you now get all this freed up energy to, to work on other things. So for me, time is number one. So the other thing too with time, and we're going to kind of talk about this in the next one, but uh, it's time with my kids. You know, right now my kids are the, the, uh, my daughter was born in 2018. And when I 
first started doing this full time, uh, my son was just starting kindergarten. So, you know, he was five at the time. So over the last six years that I started this business, you know, I've been able to spend some really good quality and quantity type time with my kids. And I look at this, whether this business succeeds or fails, I look at this and say, it was a success just for that. You know, just to be able to, especially for my daughter uh, and the challenges that she's had since she's been born, uh, the therapy sessions and all the doctor's appointments and uh, the things that we've had to do with her at home to get her to where she is today, like I would have never, I would never trade any of that away ever. Uh, but looking back, if we had never reached financial freedom, heck, well, number one, I'd never be running a business like this. But but number two, I, I don't even think I'd have an opportunity to run a, a, a model business like this that's similar in style because I was just, I just had so much debt and so much payment. So for me, like that's been huge is just getting that time back, being able to say when I want to work, how I want to work, how long I want to work and being able to prioritize my family and my kids and focus on them first and then business comes second. Um, that's huge. Uh, and yeah, that I'm, I'm with you on that, that the time thing because I take off in the middle of the afternoon on a Wednesday and I pick up my granddaughter and bring her swimming and bring her to my house and we spend the night together and I bring her to school in the morning and it, I wouldn't be able to do that if I had a nine to five. Yeah. They, they wouldn't let me off at noon on a Wednesday afternoon to go pick her up. Yeah. <laughs> it's, just, it's just unheard of. It's not, it's, it wouldn't be allowed. Um, and if she's sick, she was sick last week. So I went and picked her up. I took her, let the kids go to work and I had her for three days. Now I'm sick, but <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I got that time with her, and she cuddled so much while she was sick. I loved it. <laughs> <laughs> right, and those are the those are the things that like you you look at, and you say all the hard work's worth it. All of it was worth it. Now, don't get me wrong, guys. Full transparency. Hanging out with my kids all day, every day. I, there are some days I'm going freaking crazy. Right. <laughs> there are some days where it's like. I don't, I don't want you kids anymore. Right. But, <laughs> but, but most days, most days it's really, really good, but there, but there still are some really tough days too. Uh, the next two, we're going to kind of group them together is, uh, for me is opportunity and choices. I think this is, this is also another thing that I think has been a huge payoff for us is, is just being able to say yes to certain things, no to the things that we don't want, being able to say yes to opportunities and choices that we haven't even really realized yet, you know, things that have come up. Like, for instance, I, I brought up my daughter. It's a perfect example. Uh, when she was born in 2018, you know, we expected a, a healthy pregnancy, a healthy birth. And uh, for the most part, it was. But there was also a lot of complications and challenges. Uh, she was diagnosed with HIE and cerebral palsy. She's doing fantastic today. But a lot of the reason why she is where she is is because of the lifestyle that my wife and I have chosen to live the two of us both run our businesses from home. We've been able to prioritize her needs first. I mean, I can't imagine having Sarah go back to a full-time job after being off for nine nine weeks or 12 weeks or whatever the maternity leave would have been and then letting a daycare provider, nothing against daycare providers, but and letting somebody else be responsible for making sure that she gets her therapies in and doing all the stuff that we had to take all of that on. You know, so I look at the needs that have come over the last three, four years since she's been born. And I just say, what a blessing that we finally got out of debt because we would not be in this situation if, if we were still back where we were. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I was just going to say, you know, for choice choices for me, I mean, this was probably my number one, um, you know, time is your number one choice for me is, uh, I remember after we paid off all our debt and the feeling I had of like starting to go to work because I didn't, but I didn't have to go to work in a way, you know what I mean? Not to say you don't have to work, but you suddenly are choosing the lifestyle you want now. You're not, you know, every, most people wake up every morning and they've got to go to work. I got to go to work to pay the bills. I've got to do this. I got to do that. But suddenly when you wake up and you're like, I actually don't have to do this. Um, and, and, you know, I think that was just a big eye opener for me. And I think it really then just allowed uh, me to focus on work much more kind of what you were saying earlier, people are fo focused on debt and hundred percent, even when the inflation wasn't going through the roof. I, I mean, that was us. We were, I was not as focused at work as what I could have been because there were a lot of uh, struggles with finances and mental health and like thinking about it. Um, but when suddenly all that goes away, um, it just choice for me is, is huge. Um, I love the fact that I'm choosing the life that I want to do and available for any opportunities that happen for the rest of my life. Like I don't have to like worry. And I mean, there have been times over my 
you know, 25, 30 years of working that opportunities have presented themselves and they're things you couldn't even consider because it's like, I have bills to pay. I can't do that. Right. But now to be on the end where it's like, you know, not to say that you would do it, but knowing that you can do it if you want to, is just, man, that's so freeing to, to have that ability. Well, I mean, my, bottom line, when I was trying to get out of debt, I thought it was all about get out of debt so I can buy more stuff. That was my goal. Like, I want to get out of debt and have a bigger house and have things. And at the end of the day, I found out that these three things, hundred percent, I mean, it's all about this. It's not about the stuff at all anymore. Yeah. Yeah. It's awesome that you bring that up the way you do, because Daniel and Lori, who were just on our podcast last week, um, they said the same thing. You know, it's like, it, you know, they, they talked about this whole idea of, you know, being so hopeful now. I mean, to in five months, save and pay off over $35,000, never imagining being able to make that kind of progress. And now they're looking at like, holy crap, like we're going to be able to do some amazing things. I mean, how hopeful to be able to have the opportunity to make new choices and to take advantage of new opportunities that are coming down the pipe. I mean, it's, it's just awesome. It's one of the biggest payoffs. Yeah. And I have to be with uh, Ryan, their choices. That's my number one. I love that we have the opportunity to do anything we want to do. And, you know, and we loved it. We're concert goers. We love to go to concerts. It's, it's our thing. And if it pops up because they pop up really quick and we could just say, yeah, let's do it. And we just plan to do it and we go or vacations or camping, like anything. We just, we headed out last night. Oh, we're just going to go fishing. All right, let's go. Yep. Picked up, picked up what we needed and we took off. Yeah. So it's just, if, if we had to worry about making all this money to pay off our debt or to make our bills, we wouldn't be, you know, enjoying going fishing and just sitting there in the boat, not worrying about anything. Right. Right. It's fantastic. Well, it's like, I, th- like I said too, I think you enjoy a lot of that stuff on a whole new level because oh, yeah. you don't, you don't have all the financial stress weighing over your head about it. It's like, I remember, you know, you go out to eat for a nice meal, but meanwhile, in the back of your mind, you're like, I have no money in my savings account. When's the credit card due? <laughs> you know, right? and all of a sudden it's like, here comes the $120 dinner check, right? And it's like, oh, and I, here we are, we're supposed to enjoy this. Same thing with like vacations, right? You go on a vacation and yeah, you put it on a credit card to afford it. And here you are, you're selling yourself on this idea that we're making memories and it's okay. But yet, as soon as you get back, it's like the reality hits really, really quick. So you're absolutely right. You know, you talk about fishing. You talk about being able to spend time with, you know, your your granddaughter. You start, I mean, you just enjoy everything on a whole different level. And you appreciate it on a whole different level than when you were in debt as well. Hey, if you love planners, this is for you. But do you know why planners frustrate me? Because they only really get it half right. Now, sure. They're really good and fancy about helping you manage your time, which is really important, obviously. That's what a planner's for. But where they get it wrong is money, the second most valuable resource in our lives. Most planners don't include any financial planning, things like you know, keeping track of paydays, bills, due dates, spending, yearly expenses, budgets, cash flow planning, debt elimination plans, and goal planning, right? None of that stuff. That's a real pain. And then what? Then you got to create your own and some silly binder, right? And who has time for all of that stuff? So instead, what happens? Nothing, right? A lot of people tend to ignore their finances even more and things only get worse. Well, that all ends today because I am so excited to announce and release my brand new, totally awesome debt freedom planner. This thing's awesome, by the way. Now, before you say, Brad, I've already got a planner. This is not an ordinary day planner. This is the Debt Freedom Planner, which is a companion tool that works with your day planner, and it's built to help you manage your money, pay off more debt, and melt away financial stress. And and I believe this is the tool that a lot of people who want to take control of their finances have been waiting for. So head on over to therealdebtfreedad.com, click on the Debt Freedom Planner in the menu to get access to your planner today. All right, we are back, and we are going to do something a little bit different. Amber is going to do the Canada word of the day. <laughs> and I just, we gotta, we're going to do this. I don't know if we're going to keep this going, but so let me give you a little backstory. There's a little kind of inside joke to this. So I've been working, Amber, how long? We've, over five years now, right? We've yeah. Been, we've been working together uh, here at Defrey Dad. And, and it's on a regular occasion. I'll be like, Amber, and you probably guys, you guys probably have heard me say this on this podcast. We just did it today. Like, do you guys celebrate? you know, Independence Day or Canada Day the same way we do it. Like, and I'll ask questions like, 
what do you guys do for this? Or do you guys use this word for that? And she's like, what do you think? Like uh, one time I asked if you guys had like Walmart. Was it Walmart? <laughs> I don't remember. <laughs> I forget. It was like a store. And you're like, are you crazy? Like, of course we have we that. Igloos? Like, right. what the heck? <laughs> but then there's like certain things that like I won't ask. And you'll be like, oh yeah, this is what we do. I'm like, how would I know that? Like, so today we are going to do the Canada word of the day. Amber is going to give us a popular Canadian word. And to see if we know what it is. By the way, you got to talk about bagged milk one episode too, because that was interesting. <laughs> That's not all of Canada, but yeah, I can. <laughs> all right. So what is the what is the word of the day? All right. The word of the day today is Mickey. A Mickey. Yeah, a Mickey. It's a thing. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm going to, it has to be something with beer. Is it beer? No, but like you're a, close. Like a glass, like a, how about a, one of those silver tins of beer? <laughs> like, a, a flask. This, like, well, there's a flask, but like oh. the, like the, like, what would they, what do they call them? Like the stainless steel mugs. Oh, like a stein? A, yeah, like a stein. That's it. That's what I'm looking for. No, it's, okay. it's literally a little bottle of alcohol, like a Mickey of vodka. Okay. Mm. All right. So like the little yeah. tiny bottles they have at the little checkouts. Not that little. Oh, oh. A little bit bigger. Oh. A little bit bigger. Oh, yeah. not that. Well, what do they call the littler ones? Little what, Mickey's? Minis? I don't know. <laughs> <They're> mini. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Let's do some celebrations. Hey, hey. What's this I see? I thought this was a party. Let's do All right, all right. That song means it's time for the celebrations of the show. And today we are kicking off with Jen Raber. Jen says, I caught up on all of my late credit card payments. Jen, that is a fantastic place to be. Uh, what an amazing win. Congratulations to you. Uh, Natalie Hokato. So a few months back, I started to hate my job. I work overnights, weekends, the 11 p.m. to 7 a.m. shift. That multiplied when I moved in with my significant other because he now has a Monday to Friday job and felt like we hardly ever had any time with each other. My current job is the best paying job I have had at $27 an hour, and it has great medical benefits, but I feel it is stealing my time, which is, which as many of us know is something we cannot get back. So looking at my budget and realized that I can afford to take a bit of a pay cut to gain the desired Monday to Friday hours. Money comes and goes, but my priorities are my time and my relationships. Yep. And we just talked about all that. What a huge win, Natalie. That is a great place to be, being able to make some different decisions and choices, having the different opportunities. Uh, goes right along with this podcast. Imagine us putting that celebration in this episode. That is awesome. Great job, Natalie. Uh, Kristen Helg paid $3,334.77 on credit cards. That's incredible. Big chunk, Kristen. Congratulations to you. Kathleen Brown, I accepted a job offer on Monday that will increase my salary by $3 an hour. Kathleen, that is such an awesome win. Congratulations to you guys. Sandy Kerjarrett, I didn't go to Dunkin' Donuts all week. I had gotten into a bad habit of stopping on my way into work every day. Awesome win, Sandy. Congratulations. Good behavior change. Uh, Jennifer Foster, I purchased next season software for my business before the end of the month, saving me $300. I put $300 in my investment account and I set up automatic transfers for the $200 for my new car savings fund. Awesome, Jennifer. Congratulations to you. Yep, taking, taking uh, advantage of paying in cash early. Uh, love that. Great, great job. And congratulations to all of you guys who are working your way out of debt. And if you're just getting started, as a reminder, with either our podcast or maybe you've been listening for some time and you're interested in how you can get started on the road to financial freedom, visit our website at balancesense.com and sign up for my free a Life Without Payments workshop where I'm actually going to show you the first steps that have helped tens of thousands of people over the years, just like you and just like me, kiss, kick, kiss kick financial stress and worry for good and thanks for hanging out with us here today we love your feedback and it also helps us grow our podcast so please leave us an honest review we read every single one of those and as you guys know the debt free dad podcast is here to help you live a happier and stress-free financial life so if you know someone who could benefit from our show 
please give us a share. We appreciate you, and uh, we will see you guys on an upcoming episode. Take care. Hey, thanks for hanging out with us here today. We love your feedback, and it also helps us grow our YouTube show. So please give us a like or leave us some honest feedback on this video. And if you want the latest from the show, obviously be sure to hit that notification bell and subscribe to our channel. And for the latest resources, or if you want more information on how to kick debt and financial stress, please be sure to check out the links in this video or head over to therealdebtfreedad.com. We'll see you guys on an upcoming show. Take care.